Hey everyone, this is Cat with Wondering Soup, and we're back again with another vlog slash blog on moving abroad from the United States of America. Go USA! So this week we're going to discuss moving to Costa Rica. Last week we discussed Taiwan, the week before that was Vietnam, the week before that was Thailand. Join us on our adventures at www.wanderingsoup.com. Follow us on our YouTube channel, channel, Wandering Soup. Uh, anyway, when we discuss everything, this is just beginner information to help you possibly decide a direction that you want to go. Everything that we discuss, you have to do research on. Uh, laws do change, things change, life changes. So, again, do your research. Again, this is just starter information. Please don't hold us to anything because it is starter information and it does change. What we're going to discuss is land ownership, citizenship, business ownership, education, medical, LGBTQI rights, and with this video, cost of living. All right, let's get started. Land ownership. Can you own land in Costa Rica? Yes, you can. And actually quite easily. You actually do not have to be a citizen to own land in Costa Rica, which means for those who are looking for investment property, this may be the country for you. What you cannot do, though, is own land in a maritime zone, and you cannot own land that's been designated to poor farmers. That's it. And then everything else is open for you. you. Got some extra money? You want to invest in a country that you're thinking about moving to? This would be the country to do it in. Business ownership. You can own a business in Costa Rica without any issues. You don't have to be a citizen, but we do recommend that you become one so that you protect your property that you're going to purchase. And the, the business that you're going to run, it will make sense. Um, but again, you don't have to. Let's move into citizenship. Uh, it does, well, there's two things here that are really interesting about being in Costa Rica. Citizenship, Costa Rica and the U.S. allow dual citizenship. So you don't have to give up a U.S. citizenship to be a citizen in Costa Rica. Keep that in mind. It may be something that's important for you for later on in life. Um, Costa Rica allows um, foreign residency holders to opt for Costa Rican citizenship uh, if they have legally resided in Costa Rica, seven years if you're a foreign national, which would mainly apply to most Americans, uh, five years if you're citizens of other Central American countries. That's it. So follow the process, do what you got to do to get there. Uh, make sure that you can verify that you've lived there for seven years. You can get leases, things of that nature. That's about the only thing I would recommend for that. Medical. Costa Rica has some of the best health care in Latin America. The best. You have any problems here. There are actually universal health care and there's private health care. Pick which one you want and go for it. You'll be fine there. Education. Now this is for those who have children who are under the age of 18. And of course you're looking for education for them. If we, if, I'm sorry, as we've discussed in our other videos, it generally costs you in Southeast Asia. Here it's free. School goes from February to December with a break in June and July, but again, it's free. Education is very important for Costa Ricans, so I really don't think that you're going to have a problem. You do have private school, so if that's an option for you, go for it. And yet, of course, you can always homeschool, but again, it's free, and that's a huge bill that's gone now, right? LGBTQI friendly, same-sex marriage should be legal. As of this month, maybe it may have been pushed back um, due to COVID-19, but as of this month, it supposedly is legal in Costa Rica. Um, some of the things I read indicate that it's not bad there, so you shouldn't have any problems. In terms of PDA, I would definitely um, follow the lay of the land, look around you, see what everybody else is doing, and go from there. I don't think you have a problem, LGBTQI, in Costa Rica. Cost of living. Now, this one was slightly interesting to me in that in Costa Rica, well, actually, it was actually similar to Cambodia. You can spend as much as you want or as little as you want. And it's really going to be up to you. You're going to get a one-bedroom apartment in the city. In my city, I mean, say, San Jose. And it's going to be 400 a month. Well, that's not bad, right? Can't find that in America. Well, actually, in middle America or in the middle of nowhere America. You can also find a three or four bedroom apartment, I'm sorry, house outside of the city for about a thousand a month. 
So in between that 400 and 1,000, you can find yourself wherever you want to be. Uh, groceries are going to be pricey if you want to shop Western. Food is going to be pricey if you want to eat Western. But if you eat local and shop local, you're going to save money. So those are the things you have to think about in Costa Rica. Um, it's going to be housing. That's going to be your primary expense. You may need a car there as well. Public transportation is not great. So think about that. And uh, you may want to buy a car there versus having one shipped over because of import taxes and things of that nature. But again, basic information to get you started on your journey if you're considering Costa Rica. It's beaches, uh, sunshine, beautiful. And it's not too far away from the U.S. if you have to fly home quickly. So keep those things in mind as well. Again, this information is for those who are under retirement age, may have kids, and you're starting the journey or the thought process of moving overseas. I am Kat with Wandering Soup. Follow us, share, comment, like. Hey, give us some suggestions on what you want to see on our vlogs or what country you want us to talk about next. www.wanderingsoup.com. Find us on YouTube at Wandering Soup as well. Peace and love, y'all.